Hello everybody, this is Petey from Bergsberg Arcade at bergsbergarcade.net and today we're going to continue on with our item system series. So today we're going to go ahead and create the code that we're going to need for, let me open up the inspector here, uh, for the prefab. So let's just go ahead and jump into the code and set that up. So I'm actually going to go ahead and dock this. Let's put it down here for now. That should be enough room. Of course, we do have it set to a minimum, so it's going to snap up, but that's okay. Let's go ahead, we'll jump in the code and start adding that. Now this is being displayed during our object details. So I'm gonna add it here. And let me go ahead and make this a little bit bigger for everyone to read. And let's come down, let me go through. And we need a place to store it. So we're actually getting it from the, the weapon itself, I believe. So we'll go ahead, we'll open that class up. And right at the top right here, the prefab. So I'm gonna come down to the bottom Underneath this line, because we know we have to move it later. I'm going to create another function here. And it's just because I want it to be separate. I could put it up there as one line, and it would work. Uh, actually, yeah, we're just going to stick with the one line scenario. This is why it's a code along. <laughs> All right, so we have the prefab down here. Oh, actually, we already have it broken out. So we'll just go ahead and put it down here. So editor, GUI, layout, dot, object field. And if we take a look here, we've got a few different options. There's six of them in total. Uh, one is the object that we want to be passing back and forth, or at least storing what we're going to be storing it as. An object type, uh, and a bool for allow seen objects, and also parameters, which are optional. This is actually the one I'm going to use. Let me just quickly take a look at the others. Actually, I, I do want a label as well. So that actually, it looks like we're going to be using number two. But it's always a good habit just to go ahead and take a look to see what options you have. And I kind of like looking at it this way in Unity instead of actually going ahead and opening up a, a browser and then coming over and look at it. Sure, it gives you all the options here as well. And even some examples, but just for a quick reference, I find just going through the options that we have here good enough. So let's go ahead. We have to save this prefab. And there's a couple of ways we can do it. I just want to go up here and take a look. So we do have it set as private. I'm going to come down here. And we only have a getter method. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just stick with the actual variable itself. And let's go ahead. We'll do that label. Put a comma in. And we actually need the object type itself as well. And like I said, we're doing number two, this one here. So the object we're going to do is prefab. Next, we're going to need a type. So it's a type of game object. Now, of course, these are the prefabs that we're going to be creating and putting into uh, our actual project. So, you know, the, the mesh and the texture and everything else that you use for sword. This is where this is going to go. And then after that, we need a bool for allow scene objects. So basically objects already in your scene. Uh, there's no need to be using those. So we're going to say false. And I'm not going to bother using any GUI layout styles. So this should be good enough. Sometimes I actually have to add an extra cast saying as, you know, game object. If so, we'll go ahead and add it. I'll go ahead and delete that. And there's one more thing to note here, that this here actually returns uh, whatever type is that we're assigning here. So we're going to want to say prefab or the variable that we're actually using to display in here. We're going to assign it back. So it works just like a text field or as we're going to see a little bit later on, an int field when we change these over. But... Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So I'll save it off. We'll head back into Unity. Come back in. And we have an error. So I'm going to come over to my console. And it says that it cannot implicitly convert object to type game object. That's fine. I get this a lot with a lot of the, um, the things that require type. And most of them you can just get rid of by saying as and then stating what type you want. So I'll go ahead and save that again. Head back in. It's gone. We'll jump into our item system. And here we go, none. So when we'll go ahead and click this, another window is gonna pop up. Unfortunately, it's not another window. And we get to assign a prefab, but we don't actually have any created yet. So instead of going out and downloading a bunch of prefabs, I still don't wanna do that yet. I wanna keep this project without anything like that in it. I'm just gonna come in, see assets, scene database. I'm gonna go ahead, make a folder and call it test prefabs. And I'm just going to come up here and create one. So I'm going to say create. Uh, let's go ahead and create a, a 3D object. Let's create a cube. And I'm going to go ahead and put it in test prefabs, which will just create a prefab. We can go ahead and delete the cube now. 
and we have our prefab made. So if we went ahead and click this again, bam, there we go. Of course, if we rename this, you know, let's call it, um, you could sit down and make a sword out of it and whatnot, but we don't really need that for now. Let's go ahead and rename this. I'm actually gonna call it short sword. And now when we click this, there we go. We have our short sword, so we can double click it and it shows up and it stores. Now we do have um, a few things. Ah, I've updated to Unity 5.1 starting at the start of this video here for our series. So I'd recommend you do as well because we're going to be changing a few things. As we can see here, the title attribute is uh, now obsolete. So we're going to be switching over to a title content, which is kind of cool because it allows you to put an icon and whatnot up there. But uh, we'll have a separate video just for that for some of the updates and fixes. But anyway, there we go. We now have the ability to store our game prefabs in there. And of course, if we save it, let's go ahead, we'll save that off. Go to the database. Element one. There we go. There's our prefab. I'm actually going to go ahead and clear these out. And just to make sure that they're really clear, I'm just going to go ahead and delete them. Make sure you delete the right database. And I'm going to have to close this again, I believe. And we'll go ahead and open it back up. Always test. So we have none. We'll go ahead and grab the short sword. I'm actually going to put the name up here too. And of course, it helps if you spell it right. And a value 10, burden 10. Uh, let's make it uncommon. Damage, I don't know, 4. Uh, durability 10, max durability 10. We'll start it off at max, the prefab we already set. We'll go ahead, we'll save it. Look into the database, it's right here. And it looks like everything's saved. We have one entry, which is a short sword. Uh, we do not have an icon set for yet. Do we not have the ability? No, so I guess we're gonna be working on that next. What's left? We have equipment slot and icon, so not much left to do. And we come down, the uncommon changed. So it looks like everything is being stored into our editor just the exact way we want it. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.